Long before corn and soybeans dominated Minnesota's countryside, our fertile land provided a way of living for newly arrived Scandinavians, Irish, and Germans. Seven bushels of these at the end of the day. I don't think I'll have too much trouble. 150 years later, more small growers are again using the land. Now it's to enter agriculture or as a secondary stream of income. More recently, Minnesota's Rushniks and Hofbauers have been joined by Zhongs and Riveras. These are the real uh, mole farmers. You can see way back in, way back in, in what we have here. That is bitter, bitter melon. Now that we have the freedom of, uh, of opportunity, we are competing ourselves as far as economic development concern, educational concern. We are farming without knowing a proper way to go get public financing or, or even state or federal financing. We don't. We don't know those. While many immigrant growers concentrate in the metro area, Minnesota's large-scale food processing industries provide opportunities for new Americans far from the city. They've helped revive main streets in many Minnesota communities. Minnesota 2020's latest research shows that for longtime Minnesotans and newcomers, direct sales models such as farmers markets, co-ops, and CSAs enhance these entrepreneurs' marketing opportunities. How much? Minnesota policymakers need to encourage more small-scale agriculture in Minnesota. Minnesota 2020 urges the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development and other Minnesota institutions to enhance their cultural outreach to minority, uh, refugee, and immigrant communities. We also encourage our members of Congress to properly support the Census Bureau for its pending studies of agriculture and uh, small business ownership. Minnesota and local community leaders need this information to properly track and be aware of the contributions to our economy that is coming from small-scale agriculture and minority business ownership. <laughs>